Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another interview by Room for Discussion. Today we are honored to be joined by NRC investigative journalists Lucette Terborg and Carola Houtenkamer. A three-month investigation led our guests to the case of Dutch artist Julian Anderweg. Anderweg has gathered dozens of sexual harassment, rape, violence and theft allegations over the years, but he has never faced serious repercussions and was even able to become a successful artist with his work being shown in multiple big galleries. When the article was published, it set off a small Me Too movement within the Dutch art scene. And it seemed like Dutch art institutions struggled with dealing with these uh, claims. Why did the art institutions ignore these claims for so long? Is this an indication of a larger problem? And what do we do with the artists that have been called out during this movement? We will try to answer these and many more questions in our interview today. Lisa and Carola, thank you for joining us and welcome. Hello. Hello. Yeah, so in a time span of three months, you've spoken to roughly 80 people uh, that were involved in the case of Julian Anderweg. Uh, he's a Dutch young artist who's widely regarded as a very up and coming, promising talent. Um, and at least 20 people are known to you that claim to have been victim of rape, sexual assault, intimidation, or stalking by Anderweg. Could you, Carole, could you introduce us to the case? Um, how and why did you start this investigation? Yeah, that's a good question, but I'll give that to Lucette because it started with her. All right, that's perfect. Too. Okay. Well, I was, uh, I received an email in the summer of uh, this year, in uh, July, uh, of an artist, a young artist, a female artist I didn't know, and she told me, she uh, wrote to me, um, I would like to speak to you about. Uh, uh, Dutch artist, he's a rapist, and he's a kind of a Harvey Weinstein of the Dutch art world. And I was at that time in the middle of a kind of a movement and, and um, yeah, fixing my house, so I didn't notice immediately her mail. Uh, but when I did, I called her and we spoke to each other on the phone for about half an hour, and it seemed so serious. Uh, that um, that I invited her to my house to talk about it lay, uh, longer. And she came with another victim. And they, these two uh, women, they presented me with a lot of documents and evidence and stories about other women who had been harassed by this guy. And um, well, so then I called the newspaper and started my investigation. So it, it really looked very seriously. And um, now, yeah, you can you come from one artist to the other. It's quite simple in the art world since everyone knows each other. And uh, you can also trace people back to the years they were together with Anderweg on the Art Academy in The Hague or who were um, exhibiting with him together so it's really a small world and everyone knows each other so already after five six weeks i spoke to 15 serious uh, victim who uh, made uh, serious allegations against him and um well then the story and the investigation became so big that our editor here at uh, nrc handelsblad she advised me to to do it together as it's well, the case often with big investigations. And then came Carola. Yes. She joined me and uh, um, then we... Well, Took on from there. Yeah. And we yeah. did it together. So... Okay. So that's how it started. Yeah. Yes. And so this happened quite recently. <laughs> um, but oh. some of the experiences uh, of the testimonies w um, include experiences with Anderweg dating back to 2007. Um, do you have any idea why this only came to the attention now and not earlier? Well, I think um, there has been uh, the, a lot of these uh, women and also men tried to uh, bring it to the surface. So they talked about it with friends and sometimes with parents knew and sometimes they tried to talk to the police. And, um, uh, um, but th this all led to nothing, basically. And also because um, there was no central point for these allegations to end up. So uh, there, I mean, we now, uh, they all came to us in the end. So we 
gathered them and could have put them in one article. But there, there's one police office over there that had heard some allegations, one police office over there, some parents here, some friends there. So it never uh, added up. But there were moments that I do think it should have added up, for example, at the uh, KABK, the Royal Academy of Arts in The Hague, um, or the Rijksakademie. Uh, but you can see that it's, um, well, one hears a rumor, the other hears a rumor, and there's the allegations are spread out. Yeah, and what you see with sexual harassment, it's always the case, it's also in, the, in this, that book you refer to, She Said, from those two New York journalist, uh, New York Times journalist, who, uh, uh, um, how do you call it? Uh, wrote about Weinstein. Wrote yeah. about, yeah, the, the Weinstein case. That the, the issue of shame is very, very big. So women are very much ashamed that they, well, um, let themselves be trapped by a guy like this, that they slept with him first, it was nice to be with him, and then after that, things went wrong. So it's not something you are very proud of yes. to uh, to speak out openly. And uh, this case of this this thing of shame and also shame um, slutting is a process which you see very often with predators. So Julian Anderweg, he was the first to call them liars in public, to call them sluts to call them dirty to uh to say threaten. they were crazy or yeah, uh, mentally unstable or, yeah and to threaten yeah. them with a uh, process or with um with trials for defamation for instance so there, there's also a lot of fear and shame to Has, come out you like yeah. to dive actually a little bit deeper into uh the similarities between the case of Julian Anderweg and the Harvey Weinstein case so in the book by Jody Cantor and Megan Tui, they they actually say that the convincing of victims to become to open up with their experience with sexual assault is one of the hardest but also most important things in doing these kind of investigations. Yep. So we were kind of wondering, um, Lucetta, how much difficulty did you encounter when um, collecting the testimonies of these victims? Well, actually, the mo most of the testimonies were fairly easy to collect since I had the feeling uh, that women and men, they were really relieved to uh, to be able to talk to us and to bring it out in the open. So there was a lot of crying on the phone and crying uh, at my house also. Um, and there were some, there were a few victims only who really had to, yeah, we had to now, be encouraged yeah, be yeah. And, yeah and you have you had to talk with them for instance four or five times and it was really a very yeah, a kind of a therapeutic therapeutically process it was like uh, you had to be very empathetic and very encouraging and very saying it's very important that you speak out and uh, please help us to stop this because only together we can do this hmm. So that, that and some had to realize also that what happened to them was actually really bad mm, and yeah. um, you, you you can't you can't put words in somebody's mouth when doing journalism but some when conf sometimes we had to confront uh, some of the people with the facts and say look if if this would happen to me or to my child or to my sister that would that's really terrible and then uh, there in some people we had to struggle like was it was it that bad yeah it was that bad I don't want to acknowledge it was that bad because that makes me weak or stupid yeah. uh, that it happened to me so that's also that was really also painful but also really uh, great to see that some of the victims or some of the women with really serious allegations at the end said okay it was really bad what happened to me and I will speak out now. And I will file a complaint uh, uh, yeah. at the police. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. But, so it's it's very different. Some women are already further, if you can speak of yeah, yeah. in terms like yeah. this. And some of them, you really have to, yeah. They they really ask you, like like a mother. For, so, then what would you do? And do you really think that it was bad what happened to me? So it's very. Yeah, and then we're talking about uh, allegations of uh, 
hitting, abuse, real violence. I mean, it was out of the question. It was not grabbing somebody's uh, buttocks in the hallway. It was really out there. Systematic, systematic. Yeah. Yeah. So and and, um, yeah. So it was not in that sense. This story. It's not a Me Too story in that sense that you think. Yeah, is it that you have those questions? Is it that bad? Did, um, what 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 did this gesture mean? It's really so. Me too doesn't cover the. It's just sexual violence and yeah, domestic really, violence. It was yeah. really very transgressive. The, yeah. the, we had twenty cases whom we for whom of whom we thought these cases are strong enough. We have enough evidence to prove them like evidence from other sources, from other, from documents, chat conversations. And we also had um, yeah, yeah, allegations five, from, yeah. from, from people, four or five, whom we couldn't prove. So mm -hmm. we thought, well, okay, we leave them out of this official investigation. We speak to them and we, uh, but we can't name them in the article. Yeah. So, yeah. well, that's, yeah. Yeah. And so it seems you did very well uh, in motivating people to speak up and also convincing them that these things are indeed uh, very bad that happened to them. Because you get it, um, a large number of testimonies and they're not only coming from victims, but also from uh, gallery owners, uh, art institution employees, uh, curators, but also friends of Anne Weg. So yeah. Carola, from all of these testimonies, um, what did you find most shocking to hear? Ah, uh, yeah. It was um it's it's just some details that really um uh, struck me at night and what i what i because i look we are grown up women we can we we work for a newspaper we can deal with rough stories i mean it's sad to hear but it's part of our work but what really uh, got me awake at night was that some of the women and also the men who, who carried the wounds with them for so long and for example to lose uh, the pleasure in having sex or to ha always have pain when making love or or always be, be afraid always be On afraid yeah in, or during the night yeah always thinking hey who's who's popping up out of the shadow is that yeah. julian on the way a phone call from an anonymous number that's <gasps> your first yeah. reaction is this. and that's and that really um uh, or or be or getting a burnout and not understanding why you're burned out and while in fact you have probably post-traumatic stress uh, disorder and that really uh, that really made me sad to see how long you have to carry these wounds yeah. and uh, yeah that's yeah. that's that's what really struck me yeah and what what really shocked me beside those personal tragical stories also was the well, the, the way of handling of art institutions with yeah. uh, these, uh, with, with also complaints uh, that the women or victims filed. So that total lack of respect and interest, interest yeah. in what women uh, experience. And um, I was really shocked to, uh, to experience this in, yeah, I mean, it's 2020, how many feministic waves we already had. And still, this is the first thing mostly men reacted like, oh, oh, how sad to hear. Um, oh, okay, well. Uh, too bad for you. Too bad for you, good luck with your career. And, um, or for instance, a gallery owner who didn't even respond to a woman who wrote him a letter that she was sexually harassed by Anderweg. He is representing this guy. And he didn't even he email didn't back. He didn't even email back, not he broke the, the, the ties with Anderweg by now after the article, but he didn't wrote her back. I mean, that is like a normal way of dealing with people, a respectful way of dealing with people and dealing with women also. It's it really shocked me that total lack of interest. Yeah, but also at the school, also at the Royal Academy, what we saw is that is in into there so the, the school was very inadequate in dealing with the character yep. of uh, Anderweg. So 
uh, there's you ha can have discussions what did the school know exactly and what not and what we wrote in the article is that the school at least knew of uh, behavior like stealing snow uh, sniffing Some cocaine girl, using hard drugs, uh, using hard drugs uh, intimidating um, students into screaming uh, uh, and also uh, storing other art works exactly so, arts works. so yeah. we knew that they at least knew that mm. and there were also reasons to think they could know a bit more about uh, also sexual uh, transgression behavior but that's room for debate there <laughs> what they knew but even then what they did know the total well total the, the inadequacy in which they responded also struck me and uh, the, it's it's clearly it was impossible for them or they did not want to at that time or they couldn't uh, actually expel him in a proper way or investigate his behavior in a proper way of making sure the other students around on the weg were actually safe and happy and so that also struck me the yeah. uh, the lack of uh, the, uh, yeah. impotency they, they're not in being co yeah. capable to and yeah yeah, yeah. and you also like, like, like the art world is the kind of a playground where normal laws and uh, they don't at unilever it's, this it's, can't happen no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you already said it's a rough story, but that you can deal with it. But I can imagine it's it's really difficult to have these stories of the victims that they, they have been carrying along for years by now. And then on the other hand, uh, yeah, the stories of people that actually do know already or might have very uh, significant hints um, that are not being dealt with. How do you deal with that personally? Well, that's yeah. that's quite difficult. I mean, I had a lot of nightmares, for instance. Yeah, it's good food for a, an article, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's what you want to expose, right? I mean, you can expose uh, that somebody behaves or has allegations of seri serious problematic behavior against him. That's one part. But the journalistic significance of 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 this story is also how does the environment react to a guy who behaves like this how does the system work exactly and, yeah. and, and so that... all this this space between an appropriate reaction and the hints that they got and these terrible stories of these victims it's also it's also the material for your article so it makes you sad and uh, feisty at the same time yeah yes right could imagine that it was a, a pretty tough uh, investigation to have to um to, to yeah, be a part of. we get along very well. Yeah, yeah. and it, 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 it had a very clear purpose. Yes. Yeah. And not only to um, to nail Julian Anderweg, but also to, to to roll out what is happening in the exactly. art world. Yeah. And how yes. incompetent uh, institutions yeah. are to deal with this. I mean, why are people so afraid to say to one another, hey, what you are doing is not okay. It's yes. transgressive. We don't want this kind of behavior within the walls of our institute. Yeah. And, this and is what also, also strikes me when I talk now to people working at art galleries or having positions uh, in the art world, that the first reaction is, yeah, but it's really difficult. What do you expect? I mean, people are freelancers, the relation yes. between an artist and a gallery owner, what kind of relation is that? It's not a normal employer employee relation. Yeah, and the the first reaction is for people is is to say, but it's really difficult to tackle this. And then if you compare this to companies, regular companies, where this stuff also happens, by the way, uh, is that the, the first reaction is, okay, this is a serious problem and the board has to deal with it. Yes. And it's not that it happens adequately always, but the first reaction is, okay, this should stop. What are we going to do about it? And how can we uh, control this damage? But in the art world, everybody starts like, yeah, but what is the responsibility <laughs> yeah. of a gallery owner? What is the responsibility of a museum? And of course, it is a difficult question, but it struck me that that's the first gut reaction, while in other companies, the first gut reaction is, okay, okay, the board has a problem. What's, what, what are they going to do? And uh, yeah, that's uh, that struck me as well. Yes, we kind of want to go a little bit deeper into uh, the specificness around the art world. But first, we were very interested in um, knowing why, because in 2019, Anderweg had already assaulted 14 victims and allegations. still yeah. Alle allegations. Yeah. But still to to that point, there was no charges pressed uh, towards uh, on Anderweg. 
having mm -hmm. heard these experience of these various victims, could you maybe elaborate a bit more on why these charges have not been pressed yet? Not being pressed, yeah, that's because uh, some women, they did press charges. In 2013? And for instance, yeah, in 2013 already, and um, but the police was not very helpful then. Um, it was like, um, well, they said, for instance, to a woman, well, uh, the date of uh, the allegation doesn't uh, fit since his father, he uh, testified that he was then at home, uh, so it cannot be possible that he raped you at the same time. Um, there were also, um, yeah, that it, it's One also... One woman they said to that, yeah, you're so upset, please go in therapy first and then mm -hmm. come back. And what, uh, you see, what she said. And yeah. when you really see the bigger picture is behind it, is that, um, well, there are about 100,000 um, cases of sexual assault in, in the Netherlands every year and only about 170 really make it into court, to court. So in this process of 100,000 uh, allegations and what's happening between the court and the do domestic situation where this uh, assault happened, a lot of victims, um, you have a, a big fallout. And this is exactly what's happened, what has happened to some of our victims, uh, they were disencouraged to press charges by the police. They um, they didn't take them seriously. They sent them home, told them, oh, well, uh, think about it uh, again. It's and really hard to prove. It's, it's hard to prove. I don't think you have a case. So, and, and only- Which is all true, probably. Which, of course, and you yeah. have to be very careful with things like this because it's very hard to prove always been happened it has always happened between only two persons so who can prove it but um yeah what you see is that there was there were only there were a few women who they really became angry by it and they said well we have to do now something so they went to the uh, clara burghardt uh, in clara, Bichman, yeah. clara Bichman institute um, and they told them well this is something for the state attorney not for us so please go there yeah then you have the you press charges at police officers uh with police officers at uh the vice police and yeah it doesn't it, it doesn't no go yeah, it yeah. doesn't yeah. go fast i mean they're now really into the process of researching doing research the police and uh, uh judicial uh, authorities but it's really going very slow and it's really the despair of those women who came to me that they said we don't know where to go to anymore we have been to lawyers we've been to institutions we've been to the police and nothing happens and he can go on we say see him make his career and it's really and new victims yeah yes. and new victims yeah. they were all very afraid that he would kill one day yeah someone so yeah. yeah, that's a very um, yes tough thing to hear. I could imagine um, from from the victims yeah. you spoke to. Um, and for now, we kind of want to dive a little bit deeper into the topic we were uh, talking about before. So the the specificness to the art world of this problem. So often with sexual harassment, people will argue that it's an isolated incident uh, or it's just this one case. But could you maybe? Uh, Lucetta, could you maybe elaborate a bit more on why this is specific to the arts world, to the way that this was handled, but also the sexual harassment itself? Yeah, I think the art world, yeah, I'm, I'm already a con uh, an art critic for many years, so I know the art world a little bit. And of course, uh, in the art world, freedom is a very uh, cherished concept. Like, without freedom, you can't be creative, you must cross borders to be an interesting artist to make interesting artworks you have to be transgressive and i think the border between profession and private is very difficult in the art world you have a, a kind of an archetypical myth like the bad boy artist who is very successful and you can uh, go back to picasso who of course was an asshole when it comes to women uh, but he was very famous and there are a lot of artists who are 
yeah, who are really, well, tough guys, uh, have a lot of women together or cheating on women or harassing them. And, but their, their work sells good. So, and that was a little bit the context in which Julian Anderweg also could flourish since his, he was transgressive in a lot of, or he is transgressive in a lot of um, ways. His drug use is, um, yeah. is, is, is frequency of sex yeah, and women yeah, and, and, uh, and alcohol. And so, yeah, that's, I think, why it's very difficult for the art world, because they have to review their own position in this. How are we going to deal with guys like this? I mean, it's often they are men. And um, how are we going to, yeah, it's like, how are we going to tame them without losing their uh, artistic creativity uh, and talents? So that's that's a very in, uh, complicated issue. Um, but I think the first thing you have to do as an institute, and I'm not, I don't run an institute, is really to say, hey, these are the, this is the way we want to go along with each other. We uh, treat each other with respect. We don't uh, bully each other. Also, tutors don't bully students, but students among themselves don't bully each other or intimidate each other. These are very normal ways of dealing with each other. And what they do in private, you can't um, yeah, control that, of course, but as long as you're within an institute, a gallery place where other people come, uh, a museum, you treat each other with respect and it sounds perhaps very old-fashioned but i think that is the starting point of uh changing mm. and saying we don't like we don't want we don't accept this kind of behavior anymore what well, and one example of that is at the royal academy uh on the way at a certain point had a relationship with a young woman and it was a uh, it was a very turbulent relationship and at a certain point also this they run behind each other through through the hallways they at scream the KBK, yeah at the KBK. Yeah. they scream at each other yeah the KBK yeah. and uh, in the Haag. and um and the, the woman also comes to school with a blue eye and uh, and instead of uh difficult questions being asked by the staff by the staff at these two young people because mm -hmm. they're beginning of their 20s like what what's going on are you are you all right do you need a psychologist shall we call your parents for i mean you can't do that probably but instead of this normal curious reaction it was it was considered also by the staff to be a passionate relationship yeah. and that's some sort of romanticizing of actual abuse and uh or probably abu an abusive relationship and that's uh, that's it, it is not normal that one of your young students comes to school with a blue eye and runs screaming through the hallway in fights with boyfriends and then call that the passionate relationship that's yeah. not okay yeah because to have this normal set of rules is i think uh, a good starting point yeah because this romanticizing of abuse um i think it also becomes very clear in the article you've written about the archetypical bad boy as he is described, but also um, his quirkiness that is praised. Um, do you think it is specific for arts or because we've seen similar cases arise in other scenes too? Um, to a less yeah. extent. I mean, at the at the, at the education the economy uh, department, I don't know. Well, yeah, some I, rough I, things happen I, there as well. But, yeah. Yeah. I th well, I think it also happens there. I mean, it's it's all it's Where quite common. It? There's quite a common, but I'm not an expert on this. Eh? But uh, it's quite common knowledge that, uh, for instance. Um, uh, medicine yeah. study, medicine studies, yeah, uh, doctor and their nurses and uh, it, it has to do with hierarchy hier hierarchy hierarchy yeah oh. 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 sorry <laughs> <Am> I... <laughs> your phone is talking to yeah. you <laughs> so it's, that it's happens, all, happens. it has to do with power relations and in every situation or every pr profession where power relations are very uh, strict and very traditional and you can well okay you can also look at your own university uh, and it's not always between men and female students, but it's also between 
female tutors and students. I mean, the, the whole fact of bullying, yeah, you shouldn't accept that anymore. Yeah. That, that's, and so it's not only for the art world, uh, specific for the art world, but it's happening everywhere where power relations are in question. But don't you think that in the art world, because of the celebration of uh, unbounded artisticity yeah. and hedonism and yeah. wild partying and that's yeah. seen as, 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 as part of the scene so much yeah that's it's true i mean that the art world it always says uh, of itself well we are very uh, avant-gardistic and we are very progressive but what you see in um, in subjects or, or uh, issues like this they are very old-fashioned yeah. and uh, it own it also occurs to me how old-fashioned they are when i after the publication of the article yeah we have been overwhelmed by reactions of other victims other yeah. allegations of rape of sexual assault Violence. other that's exactly other... uh then what we were going to talk about now indeed the response after the publication because that was quite big uh so it's broadly felt um because following the publication the instagram account was created uh, also yeah. call right. out dutch art institution um an account that featured uh, many worrisome confessions of people's experiences with um, misconduct, but uh, sexual misconduct, but also all around unprofessional behavior within the arts world. Yeah. Um, could you elaborate on why the article sparked such a big response? Well, because I also think that um, I, I'm not going to defend or uh, criticize that account. Uh, it's just there. I see it as a journalist. I find it uh, an interesting uh, thing uh, to happen. And but I see it, there's what you see with sexual abuse, what we talked about before, what Lucetta said so well, is that so, so few cases make it to court and, and and the institutions, the way when you complain at the official complaints person uh, at, a, at yeah, an institution, the, the conf, yeah. yeah, the con confidentiality, I don't know how yeah, it's counselor called, counselor, yeah, the whole usually in a lot of institutions the whole institution is there and all the rules are there to protect the institution and so it's very difficult to make a complaint they always say the first thing when you complain is yeah but you know it cannot be anonymous you have to give your name mm. and it's without nobody questions this and especially with sexual assaults it's and violence uh, these, these things could be could be questioned whether it's really necessary but all the steps you have to take when you file an official complaint at your institutions are really demoralizing and they're really a lot of times uh, I, I write a, a lot of different stories uh, not about sexual assault but with whistleblowers in it and the whole system usually of institutions is to protect the institute and to neutralize the whistleblower and a sexual assault complaints is often treated as a whistleblower event like okay problems we have a bad reputation how can we neutralize this yeah. instead of how can we help the victim how can we make this stop how can we expose the the, the one who did it mm. and um and i think uh what you see at call out dutch arts institutions is a is a, a reaction to that and and it's unsafe to complain at an institution often and so it's more safe to go to Instagram and put your um, uh, complaints over there. And I think uh, institutions need to take, need to learn from this. This is what happens yeah. if you don't make your own procedures safe. Yeah. Yes, very um, interesting insights into into this Instagram account. But when we were were looking at this Instagram account and also when we were asking around, we noticed that a lot of the allegations or the, the claims that are being made are being made by students about teachers or tutors in in art mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, both of us, we, we are university students. And when talking to these students, we heard that the learning experience is just so different. So for example, teacher and student relationships are more common, but mm -hmm. also I remember one person telling me, yeah, I have a tutor with loose hands. Like these kind of remarks really um, were kind of strange to us. So we were wondering if you have any idea why this learning experience is so different at art schools than at other schools. No, I don't. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, but I don't know why it it's, it happens there so much. Why should you be touched inappropriately yeah. while learning how to paint? It's yeah. yeah. But you were also talking about bullies, tutors who, who, who yeah. bully students or students who bully each other. This seems yeah. very different from yeah. HBOs or, or universities. Did you? Yeah. Well, you make long hours together in the space. Yeah, but it's not also, it, it's also to be one of the guys, for instance, that's very attractive for some tutors to, to go along with the students. I also, uh, for a few years, I was a, um, a tutor at an art academy. Yeah, and perhaps I'm very, uh, of course, I'm very dull. It's not perhaps, <laughs> but I never, <laughs> I never went to parties. <laughs> And I never Sniff went cocaine with your students. I, I never <laughs> went to the barbecues, and uh, I knew there were a lot of tutors who did. And I always thought, well, I okay, why should I? I'm here to teach, and of course I want to have a good relationship with the students. But it's not something you have to um, to transgress into your private life. Uh, so for me, it was always very clear. But um, yeah, I think it's also because perhaps in the art world or the art institutions, the educational institutions, you see, um, what do you need to have when you are an art tutor? What kind of uh, diploma do you need to have? You can be an artist who is relatively successful, and then you get an, you are appointed as a tutor. But things like yeah, do you have to have a grade or something? It's not questioned. Um, and sometimes it goes very, it goes very well, but sometimes not because it's, yeah, you have your lessons have are, yeah, taught by someone who just has uh, an art practice. Mm. And that's it. So you're never trained as a teacher with no, all the, no, the all the no. instructions that come no. with it. No, yeah. no, and all the procedures and mm. safety measures and so yeah and perhaps that's one of the yeah, explanations mm -hmm. why this is happening so much at uh, at art institutions and edu educational institutions yeah but um yeah i think we have to make uh, every institution a safe place yeah so, so let's let's talk about how that's going to happen and also about what happened um what measures were taken because uh, your article did finally spark some some change in uh, different forms um and you've also written many other articles on the measures that were taken uh, after the publication of your article could you elaborate a bit on what impact the article has had what has happened in the arts world as a response to the investigation no, i think as you already said in the art uh, educational art world it has been uh, a kind of uh, an avalanche. Like all students were protesting. Uh, KBK was very like a revolution at the KBK. They um, they posters in the hallway, yeah, protests, and, and two of the, uh, yeah. the, the, the allegated uh, teachers who were uh, very transgressive in their behavior. They are now uh, they sent back home and. Well, they stay there until an external investigation has been uh, um, uh, completed, and they expect that to be completed in March. Um, yeah, there are a lot of institutions I know of now that also have that kind of external investigation now, um, looking at the way the two tutors treat their students. Um, yeah, and what you see, for instance, in Strom. Yeah, yeah and, and institutions, uh, hire counselors, for example, or uh, tighten up their procedures or their protocols. Yeah, yes. and, and for instance, yeah, for, yeah, in Strom, in The Hague, that's a, an art institution in Strom that also makes exhibitions and provides uh, studios for artists in The Hague. Um, well, the director there has been um, uh, how do you call it? Yeah, send send, well, send well, away yeah. and replaced by uh, by someone who's taking part of his job. Now. Yeah. yeah, yes, we see we've seen this a lot as as a response to your article and the following movement that resignations were a big part of of, of solving this problem. 
But do you think that only these resignations are enough to make an actual structural change within the art no. scene? No. no, of course not. No. What would be oh, wait, what would need what would be needed to realize this change? You think? No, but I think it, it's changes has to um, um, has to come up on a very many places in the art world. For instance, the whole system of subsidies, um, like. In, in the Netherlands, we have a good, tra a good tradition that the quality of someone's work has nothing to do with the way he's um, behaving, behaving himself in, for instance, uh, right. against women or other men. Now you see what you see, what we found out in the past year was that uh, some artists who, for instance, have been convicted uh, to jail for rape, for rape and violence against their former woman or wife. They went to jail for about 18 months and after that had three years probation. But it has, that was no, um, how do you call it? Um, of no, cons uh, no, there was no, no obstacle to, uh, to, to getting a, 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 a subsidy, subsidy right away. Me, yeah, right yes. away after he came out uh, of jail and got and travel to Egypt, for instance, on a on a fellowship. So, uh, would you like argue for some kind of VOG, verklaring van yeah, gedrag, I think for that subsidies? would be very helpful. Since you know, you see, I I have I've been a volunteer at Vluchtelingenwerk, refugee mm -hmm. work. I have a foster child at home, and for each institute, I have to submit a, fi a VOG. So, uh, and it's very easy to obtain. And um, at, um, so, yeah, uh, for instance, institutions like the Mandrian Fund, you have to submit so many documents when you want to apply for a subsidy that why not also a VOJ? Yes. I mean, yeah. it's, it's quite normal in, an, in a normal world. Yeah, why should yeah. normal to submit? Why should behavior be completely? I mean, you can discuss over the how the way to do it, and 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 but why should it completely be ignored? And in in um, uh, and also more informally, I think what what I the, a response I got quite often after the article is yeah, but the the, the art has nothing to do with somebody's behavior, and yeah. a real fear of. Oh, but are we going to have the thought police here and that you can only have uh, clean art by clean artists? And that's absolutely not, not what we argue issue. for. And we're not uh, arguing for cancel culture that all, all all pieces of art by troubled artists should be taken off the walls. That, what, that's not what we are asking for. But we think that, uh, that to leave behavior in private life or professional life completely out of the equation in having a, a, a workspace or getting subsidies or, or being ex exposed in, in in galleries and that that's weird and in, in in other companies if you have a track record or even convicted for a really terrible behavior that's part of your it's going to be part of the conversation in your in your yearly talk with your with your chief or with your the head of desk or or, or anything. I mean, yeah, and as, at least it should be. And in yes. some companies it is. Why not in the art? Yeah. Yeah, and especially since uh, you see what private collectors do, that's all their business. If they like to have uh, artworks of rapists in their house, well, feel free, Fine, feel yeah. free to buy it and enjoy it. Yes. But um, with state subsidized funding, you have, yeah, like, it's 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 a kind of a present from the public. It's taxpayers' give, money. Yeah, yeah, to give that to an artist, and it's really strange to see someone like Anderweg get funding year after year after year, or uh, another guy who into yeah whose um, history we died, and um, yeah, so that's really something that I think you have to discuss that. Yeah, and you have to to think those structures over to rethink them and to rebuild something that's more well justifiable or uh, yeah. honest now what we hear is then that people immediately say but these are not normal employer employees relationships in which these things could take place more easily and 
of course that's true but that should not be an argument to 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 not uh, act and change some of these structures it is difficult there are various kind of relationships in the art world independencies dependencies but still okay so it's it's harder but we think it's not impossible to 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 take behavior into the equation yes yeah. This is something we would like to uh, dive in a little bit more later on in the interview. But for now, um, we kind of want to look at the Instagram again and, and the larger movement uh, that was set in emotion after your article. So what we see is that on social media, there were a lot of calls for cancellations of institutes, individuals, uh, museums, these kind of um, places where Anderweg was, was a part of or uh, even like other institutes that have been called out on um, on the call Dutch Art Institution Instagram. <laughs> Do you think that the cancellation of these institutes or people or their work is an effective response to this case? No, no, no. no. Well, no. it's everybody's choice. Hey, if you have a picture on your wall and you suddenly dislike it and you want to throw it out, you're free. But if you want to uh, keep it on your wall, you're free as well. But I think that for a museum, which is the public, in sort of sense, a public space, that's also, and it's, it's in the now, that it's good to think about what does it mean if I leave this stuff hanging now and maybe victims or other victims or uh, will come in and see it. I mean, that's a real question. Is that wise? Is that what you want? You cannot, you have to think about it. But I, uh, but uh, yeah, cancelling art. Yeah. No. Well, we're not. Uh, I not, mean, we are not in in no in we favor saw, of that. No, and we saw magazines no. taking down interviews with Anderweg from their website, and from a journalistic point of view, that's completely outrageous yeah. to us. That's why would you cancel history? That's really weird. And we are journalists, and we would, I think, we really oppose that. Yeah. And I think, I mean, there were a lot of statements of institutions on their websites after the article, like, oh, we don't want to have anything to do with it anymore. And we regret that we invited him. But I think, why would you uh, make such a statement? Why don't you, why don't, do you only look at the past? Why don't you make a statement about the future, about what you want to change, how you want to prevent things like this yeah. happening? I mean, who cares whether you leave your your, yeah. your paints hanging? I mean, yeah, or it's yeah. Whether, whether you have invited him to a private party uh, two years ago. Who is interested in that? Yeah. And um, so I think you have, yeah. 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 And an interesting thing you said, uh, Carola, was uh, you said as a journalist, um, I do not think this is right. Um, from a journalist perspective, do you think? Um, there is a role for journalists to break this cycle of uh, reluctance to respond to misconduct within certain scenes. Definitely, yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. And we are now very much in the process of, um, well, evaluating everything that's uh, coming up to us now with more news, or so what's important and what's not important i mean not everything is strong enough to to write about in the art in in the newspaper but um yeah you see it's it's all part of this on the weg case is part of a very much bigger structure and how are you going to give that a, a face or in a newspaper so that's really something to well to to talk about and i think we should very much talk about it and how how do we do this how do the, how do we do this also on a respectful in a respectful way and not only bullying and finger pointing to each other but say hey okay uh, this is what we have and how do we proceed from here and um what do we want in our organization and what not yes and, uh, yeah. and that is something we want to follow as journalists and see what's happening inside these institutions but unhappily enough almost nobody dares to talk to us anymore <laughs> <laughs> you're the witches coming for you yeah. I, i'm sorry i have to run off yeah and of then, so let's, let's take over yeah thank you so much thank you for joining us um yeah lisette 
You already talked about this a little bit at the start of the interview, uh, the process that you as, as journalists go through in collecting all this evidence and making sure that everything that you write down is uh, verifiable. But something that we, we saw a lot on social media is, um, which was pretty interesting, is the direct name calling of certain okay. artists yeah. Yeah. Um, in, yeah. in confessionals. And we understand that people feel frustrated and uh, want to take justice into, our own ha into their own hands. But how do you feel about this name calling when this has had uh, s severe repercussions for, for certain individuals? You mean the, the main name calling in our article or the name no, calling in, in, that call out Dutch art institutions? For example, and, and, and other mediums uh, as well. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, what I think was very good of call out Dutch art institutions was they were there for a reason. And that reason is the most important thing why they did this and why they did it like this. That name calling was, um, kind of a necessary uh, part of this way of coming out with those yeah with those names those, those these people and of course what happens then is that you see about 100 posts at that instagram account and some of them they are like okay well what happened to you wow grow up or um, it's not so interesting to read uh, but there were also posts a lot of posts about certain men and artists uh, who were so serious that I think, well, it may it have effect these and it, it really um, did something to those institutions. So they um, they tackled the problem. They uh, talked with the guy, in, the guys involved. And I think that's very good, especially since you see there in the art world, although we are very, um, as I said, very uh, progressive, of course, <laughs> Everyone sticks to their places so very long. I mean, uh, directors who are 15, 16, 20 years sitting in this, on the same chair, I think that's amazing. Uh, and that's um, for a few a few months ago or about a year ago, I did a big investigation into uh, racist structures in Dutch museums. And among other, I spoke to Rein Wolfs and it had nothing to do with this, with that racist um, uh, subject. But he told me in, in Germany where he came from and where he was a director, you had to change positions every five years. Yes. And they did it to prevent corruption. That's what in Germany is very odd. So you're not corrupted by gallery owners as a director of an art institute. And this is also something you could, well, introduce in the Dutch art institutions like you have to reconsider your position after five years or you have to move on again and not stick to that place because what you see then is yeah all of course you have a lot a, a whole body of knowledge and uh, someone has a big history and his heritage is very important but nobody ever can never be replaced yes yeah. And um, so this structure of, well, sticking with the same same guy over and over every year again, I think that should change also. And because this is something we came across a lot in our research as well, that the same directors have been sitting in the same boards for, for, for decades now. And also this, I think, false idea of progressiveness within the, the yeah. Dutch art scene, even though there's still uh, older generations. Um, but do you think that your article has helped in maybe switching around these boards and, and making sure that this change that is necessary is, is actually realized? I hope so. I mean, I think it's too early to, to already um, to say that uh, since changes go very slow. And for instance, now at Strom, they changed the director and they are looking for a new director. Um, but yeah, I do hope that a lot of art institutions are going to change. And um, yeah. Yeah. So let's have one final uh, discussion on cancel culture as well. But then maybe a bit more on a philosophical note. Actually, you already touched on this before. Um, but some critique also in response to the article is uh, coming in the form of um, 
people saying that we should not uh, see the value of an of an artwork um, the same as the as the moral standards of the artist. So that we should not correlate them. Mm -hmm. um, so on a more philosophical note, to what extent do you think we should uh, judge the quality of an artist uh, artwork uh, by the moral standards of the artist? No, not. I, I think you should not do that. Okay. I mean, it has nothing to do with uh, each other. The only thing we, uh, I'm convinced of is that you can question the fact that you give public finance or you, you finance publicly by public uh, funds um, the creation of such artwork since um, someone who has been convicted, yeah, if, if, if a mayor of the, of the city council, he steals a bike, he can't uh, stay in his position anymore. He has to decline it. And um, so it's it's all about the public, the question of public funding. I don't think uh, the quality of an artwork has something to do with the quality or the moral compass of an artist. He can be, yeah, I mean, he can be a terrible, I mean, Picasso, for instance, he wasn't quite a nice guy. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I like some of his work. Let's say I like some of his work, but um, yeah, that you you can't uh, yeah you can't can you can't put it together. It's not a one to one solution. And if you don't like someone personally, you don't like his artwork. No, it's sometimes very good to not know someone and to not be personally involved into an artist. Mm -hmm. So you say you sh we should uh, w with public funding we should look at uh, someone's behavior and someone's morals or misconduct yeah. Um, yeah. but for uh, private yeah. enjoyment of art it's something quite different i think or the quality of an artwork yeah that's that's something yeah quite different so it's if a um, if a private collector wants to buy the artworks of julian anderweg he he yeah. must do that. And, but, um, but then still, um, also in the article um, um, from you and Carola, um, there was one instance where uh, Anderweg was, being, was having an exposition in uh, an art institution, and then uh, the owner of this, this institution received an email of um, a girl saying, you should not uh, give credit or give a stage to this yeah. artist, because um, there's a lot of cases going on with this uh, guy. Um, but then if you look up, uh, uh, on this matter in that way that we should not uh, correlate those things together, then th that's not a bad thing, right? That he was still given the stage. Yeah, but that was a, uh, that was a publicly funded uh, art institution. So that's something different. And what I found very um, uh, shocking in his reply to this woman was that he, he specifically he emphasized that the fact that Julian Anderweg was making uh, such good art was having had to do with his complicated character that he was lying he was he was known as a liar to him he was transgressive in a lot of uh, uh, situations and I think well that is a very that's something that has to be uh, cut loose from each other. It's not because someone is a bad guy that he also makes good art. Yeah. So that's that's completely nonsense. And that's something that's that myth where we were talking about in the art world. Like, okay, well, he's really a bad boy. Well, okay, he makes great work, post punk and uh, very rough and uh, a lot of noise. And um, yeah. of course, something he smashes with things but it's all part of the game and yeah that's has nothing to do with the quality of his work yeah thank you very much for that um so we've had a i think we can conclude that the cancel culture is quite a complicated debate um and what we have to do with that but we are approaching the end of the interview um so let's end on a bit lighter uh, tone um we've already said that Many artists have, have mildly put, had uh, loose morals, Picasso, but uh, also Caravaggio. Um, and we still like art, and there's not much more to do in these times <laughs> also. So 
a question to you is uh, what exposition of a non-problematic artist should we be attending the coming weeks? Should we be attending? Well, I can only say that the one I would still love to visit is the, ex uh, the acquisitions exhibition at the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam. I would love to see that. Um, yeah, let's have a kijk. What, yeah, I saw a very interesting exhibition of uh, Hans Broek in the Pond in Tilburg. I interviewed him. I'm still in the pro process of uh, working out this interview, but he made um, um, a set of paintings the last year about uh, the, uh, the, the the way Dutch colonists um, traded slaves in uh, Africa and what kind of architecture they built there. And it's they are really very impressive those paintings. So that's a second second best or for me it's yeah. now the best but <laughs> i'm looking forward to the acquisitions exhibition cool. in the state look also so very cool we will definitely be attending right yes <laughs> very much so thank you lucetta for your time and your your very interesting insights into this story and um to the audience we would like to say we we are going on a short winter holiday break <laughs> We'll be back in January with uh, new interviews. And we also started a project called Studenten Stemmeiser, which you can find on our Instagram page um, that we are working on. So please keep an eye on that. And um, that was it for today. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, too.